In this video, we bring you a cool intermediate pattern that you can use to up your game for musicality in West Coast Swing. What's up, gang? It's Brian B. And Miss Megan. From West Coast Swing Online, the number one rated West Coast Swing website in the history of the universe. Yay! Um, in this video, we're going to bring you a roll in to a pop out from a handhold that you've never seen. So, first, let's go ahead and take a peek to music. All right, gang, in typical West Coast Swing fashion, we are going to break this down where we show you the most basic version of it first and then give you the variations. So it's based off of a roll in and roll out. A one, two, three, and four. We anchor five and six. So in the roll in, roll out, we prep our partner on count two so that they may roll in three and four. And then if we're dancing a basic, we're just going to anchor off that five and six. But what goes on on count four is going to be important because it's going to communicate the difference between this basic version and the more advanced version. So on the basic version, can you talk about what you what you feel on the roll in part? Yeah, so one, two, three, and four. I don't feel like I can continue a turn without really getting uh, locked in there. And then it feels like I can actually walk forward on this. So I'm pretty much encouraged to walk forward and stay connected into this hand. Cool, so leaders, where I set that hand is going to tell me or tell the follower if we're gonna pop her out into the harder version. So in the basic version, I just give her enough room to get on that, but I stop her, right? Not enough to crunch her, but just enough to give her something to work off of. When I want to pop her out, I'm gonna give her a little bit more room to be able to lead the pop out, right? So what we're doing here lead wise, we go one, two, three, and four. Megan's gonna fill out the space. The more space that I give her, the more she's prepped to be able to dance the pop. Cool? So what goes on with the pop? We're gonna go back here. We're gonna do this two different ways. I said that this would be good for musicality. Let me give it to you in the non-musical way, and then we'll show you how I'm gonna structure it to accent something in the music. So if I use straight West Coast Swing timing, one, two, three and four. I've given Megan space. Now I can use my hand up top on the shoulder for five and six. And then we spin this seven and eight, nine and 10. If we did that again, right? One, we prep two. That's my check mark. Three and four. I've given Megan space. Now I'm going to over rotate this hand as I catch her shoulder five and six. And now I stay in front of her. She's going to triple. I'm going to lead this across for seven and eight, nine and 10. Can you just quickly demonstrate the basic footwork? And then we're going to talk about the variation. Yes. So we have one, two, three and four. We're going to turn back out on five, five rock and six. And then we're going to turn seven and eight, nine and ten. Cool. So for the leaders, again, if I was doing this in the most basic form for an intermediate pattern, I would keep the triples going. One, two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten. But I want to use this to create an accent. And as we get into the accent, I'm going to talk about some things connection wide and lead wise that'll make this work. So if I want to accent something in the music, say count five, right? Or count one, depending upon where we are in the music, we'd have one, two, three, and four, and five, six, seven, and eight, nine, and ten. Or for your mus music aficionados, musicality freaks, if we start on count five of the pattern, five, six, seven, and eight, and one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Cool. So we're going to talk about in this in a little bit more detail, but if musicality is a thing for you, Go ahead and click on the link in the description. We're going to download our um, number one key to musicality, which will help you understand that. So if kind of what we talked about there is foreign musically, click that link, download that video, and that will help. But we move on. So we want to accent the five, right? One, two, three, and four. So instead of dancing five and six, I'm going to accelerate this for and five, right? And what I've done is create a stop for Megan in two places. Number one with this hand number two with this hand. I could also have led that down low. I actually prefer low, 
but high is another option, right? Depends upon your height. If we're appropriately heighted, I like to be down low. If I was much taller than Megan, it might be harder to reach down there. I might go to the shoulder. So we give her a lot of space. One, two, three, and four. She's been given a lot of space, so she has plenty of energy to go. And five, right? Now I put her back on count six. When I put her on six, I don't want to start this turn on six. I want to put her on six prepped or forward on that left foot. So that way she has the energy to spin. So what happens is followers, I'm sorry, leaders sometimes will not allow the follower to be prepped mm -hmm. and your higher level dancers will still make it work, but it's not ideal. I want to leave my follower prepped forward on the foot when I want her to turn, right? We have one, she's prepped for two. I roll around three and four. She's prepped forward on the, on the right foot for four and five, six, she's forward on that foot. So that way I can lead seven and eight, nine and 10. While we're in talking about this, can you talk about what goes on with your hands yes. so I don't break my nose? All right, so we're in here. One, two, three, and four, and five. So once they put us back on six, um, they've, he's been having this hand, so I haven't had to do much with that. Um, I would take this straight up. So I have a tendency to go straight up and back down, and there is no around the face. Bingo. So if she's spinning that. hands up, right, I have all this room to operate in. If she puts her hands out to the side, I now have to be further <laughs> away. So leaders, here's your last little bit of information. I'm going to do it from both sides. If I roll this in, three and four and five, six, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be trading her from my left hand to my right hand anchor step, right? If I did it from the back side, one, two, three, and four, and five, six. I'm gonna trade her from my, she's still connected to my left hand. I'm gonna trade her to my right hand, even helping put her on this step and anchor. That does two things. Number one, it's solid lead, makes it really good for the follow because she can just stay connected. You can buy one of Megan's Get Connected shirts in our store below, or this shirt in our store below. Number two, it lets me defend myself. Meaning, if the follower is unsure of what's going on, right, and the arms, I can defend myself and keep the follower away, still preserve the pattern, put her on the right foot, all that good stuff. Cool. Any parting thoughts? No, I think that's it. Got it. If you haven't visited our website, do me a favor. Show us some love. Subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up on our video. Leave us a comment and head to the website in your email address. You're going to get 60 some odd free videos and you'll be part of our move of the week club where we give exclusive stuff via email to our most loyal subscribers. So thanks for the support gang and we'll see you again soon.